Hello students of class 8. Welcome to today's English class. Today we will learn unit 3 of your supplementary reader It So Happened. The name of the unit The Selfish Giant. This is a story written by the famous writer Oscar Wilde. Are you ready? Okay. This is a story of a giant who was often called the selfish giant. Now what is a giant? According to Oxford Learners Dictionary, a giant is a large strong person who is often cruel and even stupid. This is the kind of giants that we often find in stories. Now, do you think giants really exist? Let us read the story and find out if in real life we have ever found giants like this. Okay, let us start. Are you ready? Once upon a time, there was this giant who had a beautiful garden around his house. Every afternoon, little children came to play in that beautiful garden. It was a lovely place. There was soft green grass, beautiful flowers popping out of the grass and dancing in the breeze. On one side of the garden, there was a row of peach trees which had lovely pink and pearl blossoms in spring and red peach fruit in autumn. The children enjoyed playing in this beautiful garden. Very often they exclaimed, how happy we are here. One day, the giant came back from his visit to his friend, the Cornish Augur, after seven long years. He came to his garden and found these little children. What are you doing here? He said. The children got scared and ran away. My garden is my own garden and I will not allow anybody to play here except myself. Seeing this, the giant made a huge wall around the garden and put up a notice board that said, trespassers will be prosecuted. Now, do you know what that means? Yes. Anybody who enters his garden without his permission will be punished. How sad for the children. They could never come back to this garden again to play. They tried playing on the roads. The roads were dusty and full of stones. They were very sad. They went around the walls of the garden and exclaimed, how happy we were there. Poor children. Time passed and the winter was over. Spring came. There were flowers and birds in all the gardens in the neighborhood. But in the garden of the giant, the selfish giant, the spring never came. It was still winter. There were no flowers and there were no birds in his garden. Look at page 19 of your textbook. Look at the first paragraph. I'll read to you how the giant's garden looked wrapped in eternal winter. 
Look at the page. Once a beautiful flower put its head out from the grass, but when it saw the notice board, it was so sorry for the children that it slipped back into the ground again and went off to sleep. The only people who were pleased were the snow and the frost. Spring has forgotten this garden, they cried. So we will live here all the year round. The snow covered up the grass with her great white cloak and the frost painted all the trees silver. Then they invited the north wind to stay with them and he came. He was wrapped in furs and he rode all day about the garden and blew the chimney pots down. This is a delightful spot, he said. We must ask hail on a visit. So the hail came. And what is hail? It's the terrible snowstorm. Every day for three hours, he rattled on the roof of the castle till he broke most of the slates. And then he ran round and round the garden as fast as he could. He was dressed in grey and his breath was like ice. I cannot understand why the spring is so late in coming, said the selfish giant as he sat at the window and looked out at his cold white garden. I hope there will be a change in the weather. But alas, the spring never came nor the summer or the autumn. The autumn brought rich ripe fruits to all the gardens around, but not to the giant's garden. He is too selfish, said autumn, and it did not visit the giant's garden. There was eternal winter there with the snow and the frost the north wind and the hailstorm raining there, all of them as cold and as loveless as the giant's heart. Days and months passed. One morning, as the giant lay awake on his bed, he heard a lovely music. He thought, Maybe the king's musicians are passing by. But actually, it was only a small linnet, a brownish singing bird, sitting at his window and singing. The giant could smell a lovely perfume coming in through the window. He jumped out of his bed and went to the window. He saw the hail had stopped and the north wind had stopped roaring. Oh, the spring has come at last, he said. He was so happy. This is the first part of the story. Do you like the story? Okay, let's look at the comprehension check questions before we go to part two of the story. Question number one. Why is the giant called selfish? Yes, we all know that. The giant did not allow the little children to play in his garden. He said his garden was his own garden and built a wall around the garden. And he also put up that notice board which said trespassers will be prosecuted. That is why the giant was called the selfish giant. Okay, question number two. On one occasion, the children said, how happy we are here. Later they said, how happy we were there. What are they referring to in both the cases? Yes, the children said, how happy we are here when they played in the giant's garden. The second sentence 
how happy we were there refers to what the children said when they were not allowed to play anymore in the giant's garden and they walked around the garden wall sad that they could not go in and play. Question number three. Part one. When spring came, it was still winter in the garden. What does winter stand for or indicate here? Winter stands for the cold, desolate and lifeless environment. When the giant drives away the children selfishly out of his garden, the garden is deprived of the warmth, love and liveliness of the children. That is when winter takes possession of the garden. The cold winter is almost like the cold hearted giant. Okay, the next question. Part two, winter has been presented like a story with its own characters and their activities. Describe the story in your own words. Winter thrived in the giant's garden, accompanied by the frost, the snow, the hail and the north wind. Can you imagine a story with all these talking to each other and staying on in the giant's garden? Imagine the conversation that takes place between these four characters, the snow, the frost, the hail and the north wind. Think about this and write down a story later as homework. Okay, let's go to the next question, question four. Was the giant happy or sad over the state of the garden? Yes, we all know it. The giant wasn't happy as the spring delayed. Question five. What effect did the linnet song have over hail and the north wind? As the linnet sang, the hail and the north wind stopped roaring and destroying the castle. Okay, let's now go to this part two of the story. As the giant looked out of his window, he saw the most wonderful sight. He saw that through a small hole in the wall, the children had crept back into his garden. On every tree there was a child and the trees were so happy that the children were back. They were filled with lovely white and pink blossoms. Down on the grass there were lovely flowers blooming. He looked around. There were birds and butterflies. Suddenly he noticed in one corner of the garden there was still winter. There was snow on the tree. He looked down there and saw there was a small child standing under the tree. He was so tiny, he couldn't climb the tree on his own and he was crying bitterly. The giant's heart melted looking at the scene. He decided to go down and put that child on the tree. He realized his mistake and said, how selfish I had been and now I know why the spring never came here. He also decided to break the wall and let the children play in his garden. There was a transformation in his heart. He was selfish no more. Maybe he was not even a giant anymore. As he came down to the garden, the children were scared of him and they ran away. And just then, winter came back on the garden. The little boy far away was the only child that remained because he could not see the giant. 
his eyes were filled with tears. The giant quietly went near him, put him on the tree, and soon the tree filled with lovely blossoms. Birds came and sat on it and sang. The child was so happy, he put his arms around the giant's neck and kissed him. The giant was happy too. When the rest of the children saw from far that the giant was not cruel anymore, they all ran back and went up to all their trees again. The whole garden filled with flowers and birds and laughter and song again. What a wonderful sight it was. It is your garden now, little children, said the giant. And he took an axe in his hand and knocked down the wall. The children played all day long. And in the evening, before they left, they came to the giant to bid him goodbye. The giant loved all of them. But he looked out for that little boy whom he had put up on the tree. He loved him the most because that child had kissed him. The children said, they knew nothing about this little boy. The giant was sad because he wanted to meet this boy once again. From then on, every afternoon, the children came to play in the giant's garden after school. But the little boy, whom the giant loved so much, was never seen. The giant loved all the children but he longed to see that little friend of his. Years passed. The giant was now old and feeble. He could not play around with the children anymore, but he sat on his huge armchair and watched the children playing every day. He once said, I have many beautiful flowers in my garden. But the children are the most beautiful flowers. What a change the giant had undergone. He was kind and loving. Nobody would ever believe that he was once upon a time a selfish man. One winter morning, he looked out of his window. He did not hate the winter anymore. He knew that spring was asleep and the flowers were resting. He knew the truth. If winter comes, can spring be far behind? Suddenly, he looked at the farthest corner of the garden and found one tree which was filled with flowers and silver color fruits amidst this terrible winter. Under the tree was that little child, that little friend for whom he waited for so long. The giant rushed down to his garden, went closer to the tree. But as he went near the child, anger grew on his face. Who dared to wound you? said the giant. What was that? On the palms and the feet of the child were marks of nails. The giant was angry that somebody had wounded the child and wanted to kill the man who had wounded him. The child smiled and gently said, Nay, these are the wounds of love. The giant was surprised to hear that. He said, Who art thou? Who do you think the child is? Does this remind you of Jesus Christ? Yes. When Christ was crucified, nails were driven into his palms and feet. 
He had borne that terrible pain, that suffering, out of his love for humanity, so that all the bad qualities, the qualities that make a man a giant or an ogre, are washed away. That is why the child said, these are the wounds of love. Christ, out of his love, had sacrificed himself. Okay, so what happens next in the story? The child tells the giant, You allowed me to play in your garden once. Today, I will take you to my garden. Now, which is this garden? Yes, this is the garden of paradise. The garden where God takes us after our death. According to the Bible, this garden is called the Garden of Eden. That afternoon, when the children came to play, they found the giant lying dead under that tree. And all over him were lovely flowers that had been dropped by the tree. Okay, so that is our story. Do you like the story? What do you think the story tells us? Does it tell us that loving and sharing is a divine quality? Does it tell us that kindness is a great virtue? Think of these. Let us now look at the comprehension check questions on page 24. Look at question number one. Part one, the giant saw the most wonderful sight. What did he see? Yes, we know that. As the giant looked at his garden, he found there was a small child sitting on each of the trees and the trees were filled with flowers. There were flowers popping out of the grass and there were birds singing all around. Okay, now part two. What did he realize on seeing it? The giant realized that he was very selfish in not allowing the children to play in his garden. His heart was cold and loveless and that is why the cold and frosty winter stayed forever in his garden. Question number two. Why was it still winter in one corner of the garden? Yes, we know that. There was winter in one corner of the garden where there was a small child standing under the tree. The child was so tiny that he could not climb the tree on its own and therefore there was winter in that part still. Question number three. Describe the first meeting of the little boy and the giant. We have discussed this. Try writing this later. Question four. Describe their second meeting after a long interval. We discussed this too. Try this later at home. Let us now go to question number five. The giant lay dead, all covered with white blossoms. What does this sentence indicate about the once selfish giant? The giant was selfish no more. He had turned into a very loving and kind man. And when he died, the flowers that were thrown over him was nature's way of rewarding him for this wonderful transformation of his heart. Okay, now let us look at the next section, exercise. Look at question number one. The little child's hands and feet had marks of nails. Who does the child remind you of? Give a reason for your answer. We discussed this some time back. We said, yes, the child reminds us of Jesus Christ. You know that. Let's now go to question number two. Is there something like this garden near where you live? Would you like one 
and why? What would you do to keep it in good shape? Just look around the place that you live. Do you have a nice garden or a park? If you were given charge of taking care of that garden or the park, what would you do to keep it in good shape? Think about some of the things that you can do. Yeah, when you go to the park, don't litter it with plastic bags and paper wrappers. Yes, don't pluck flowers. Don't walk over the lawn. See to it that nobody ever comes to cut the trees down. There are many other things that you can do to preserve a park or a garden around your house. Talk to your friends when you meet them and discuss what are the things that you can do. Let us now go to the last section, think it over. There are two popular sayings there in that section. Let us first look at the second one. Owning things is human, sharing them is divine. Have you ever seen people who share everything that they have with others? Have you seen nature sharing things with us? Look at the tree. It bears fruits for us, not for itself. Look at the cow. It gives us milk and not only to its calf. Look at the river that flows. It does not flow for itself. It flows so that we can use its water. It is said, like these aspects of nature, we human beings are given our life to also help others. Look at the tree, how selfless it is. It even gives the axe the handle, the axe that cut the tree. Have you seen people who selflessly help and serve others? Today, I will mention to you one such people. There are many, many more in our society, but here is one story. Have you heard the story of this lady? Look at the picture. She is Sindhu Thai Sapkal. Have you heard of her? Yes. She was born in a very poor family in Maharashtra long ago. She wanted to study but could not continue for long because of poverty. At 10, she was married. When she was 20 and was about to give birth to a child, her husband threw her out of the house. Soon after, she gave birth to a daughter. She was all alone with this little baby and knew nowhere to go to, no food, no shelter. Sindhutai did not lose hope. She went around begging to provide for herself and her daughter. She took shelter in one corner of a railway station and went begging from train to train to feed herself and the daughter. When she went back to the railway station shelter, she found there were many more children who were left out by their parents, many orphans who were around. So that little food that she got, she shared with them. More and more children came to her, attracted by her love and care. Gradually, Many children came to Sindhutai and she worked very hard going from place to place begging for food so that she could share with these children. This went on. Many children came to her. She herself did not have a shelter but she took care of these children. Gradually it attracted the attention of people around and some kind-hearted people made little shelter for her and the children. This went on. 
today, Sindhu Tai has taken care of over 1,000 children. She provided them with food, most of which she got from begging. But she saw to it that these children had education. And many of them have grown up to be very responsible citizens of the society. Some are doctors, lawyers, teachers, nurses. What a lovely story this is. What an inspiring story. Her life also exemplifies the other statement that is there in your book, in the think it over section. Look at the first statement. Selfless love involves suffering for others. Sindhutai could have been okay begging and providing for herself and her daughter. But she didn't stop at that. She also cared for the other orphans around. She had to struggle very hard to feed so many mouths. And she took it upon herself just because she had a loving heart. OK, so do you like this story? Yeah. So with this, we complete unit three of your English supplementary reader. What did we learn today? Yes, we read the story of the selfish giant. We answered some of these comprehension check questions. We discussed the exercise and also the think it over section. We heard the story of Sintu Tai Sapkal briefly. That's all for today. See you next time. Till then, goodbye. Thank you.